The first part of our solar setup is all finished. Our solar panels are mounted and they're charging our battery. So today I'm gonna work on the next part, which is this stuff. A 3000 watt pure sign inverter, a 75 amp smart converter charger, and a pre-wired transfer switch that wires everything together. If all we wanted to do was just have some solar panels to keep our batteries charged, we wouldn't need all this stuff. But we want to be able to operate our 120 volt appliances wherever we are, whether we're plugged in or we're out somewhere dry camping or boondocking. The inverter is arguably the most important component of the three I'm going to be installing today. It allows us to run 120 volt appliances off of our 12 volt batteries. It takes the 12 volt electricity coming out of our batteries, increases the voltage up to 120 volts, so we can use appliances like our microwave, our refrigerator, and our computers using the electricity from our batteries. There are two types of inverters, and it's really important to pay attention to which one you're purchasing if you're looking to get your own solar setup. There's a pure sign inverter and a modified sign inverter. The output voltage of a pure sign inverter smoothly alternates between 120 volts and negative 120 volts, just like utility supplied power you'd find coming out of a wall socket in a home. It's clean power that you can run sensitive electronics on, like a computer or a TV. Pure sign inverters are also very efficient, but the downside is that they're expensive. The output voltage of a modified sign inverter, however, is more of a square waveform where the voltage rapidly jumps up and down instead of smoothly flowing up and down like a true sine wave. This means you cannot operate sensitive electronics like a microwave, um, computer, or a TV, but you can run things like a toaster or an induction plate. Also, modified sign inverters are less efficient and you may lose up to 30% of your power just through the inverter. The reason some people go with modified sign inverters, however, is they don't plan on running sensitive electronics, but they want to save some money. And there's nothing wrong with that. What's most important is what you plan on using your inverter for. The next component is our smart converter charger. It essentially does the opposite of what an inverter does. It takes 120 volts coming from shore power, takes the voltage down to 12 volts, and then sends it to the batteries to charge it. Now this is a smart converter charger because it has three stages of charge, bulk, absorption, and float. As the battery's state of charge increases, it progressively lowers the current that it sends to the battery so that it charges the battery slower and slower as it approaches 100% charge. This is done because it is easier on the battery and it will increase the lifespan charging it this way. The converters that come factory in RVs are typically only one stage converters and they'll just charge a battery at the same current and the same voltage throughout the charge cycle. This can be harmful to batteries and decrease their lifespan. So a smart converter charger is important to have. The last component we're going to be installing today is the transfer switch. The transfer switch's job is to tie this whole system together. It has an internal relay that automatically switches us between shore power and battery power when we plug in or disconnect from shore power. We're gonna mount these components and our two batteries and our front pass-through here because this is basically the only place in RV that has enough room for all this stuff. So I think we've done enough talking. Let's get to it. So the first thing I needed to do was lay out the inverter, charge controller, transfer switch, and the two batteries in the pass-through just to make it sure everything fit right and they were arranged in a way that I liked. We don't have our batteries yet, so I just cut out some cardboard that had the same footprint as our battery so I could lay it out just to get an idea of where I wanted to put those two. So now that I know where I want everything placed, I'm gonna go ahead and take the transfer switch and the inverter out because the transfer switch needs to be hardwired into the inverter. So this plug leading out of our transfer switch is inverter. So typically this would just plug right into the inverter. But this specific model through GoPower does not have a plug on the back. Other models through GoPower do, but for some reason this one doesn't. So we need to take off this plate, take apart this plug, and hardwire this line right into the inverter. So right inside the inverter behind this panel, there's these three terminals that we can put these three wires in. We have one marked L for line, or the hot wire. We have another marked neutral, and one marked ground. So our line wire is black, our neutral wire is white, and our ground wire is green. So we can go ahead and put those in. All 
All right, so the transfer switch is wired into the inverter now, so I can go ahead and put those back. And the next part is super easy. It's just connecting the converter charger to the transfer switch. All right, next is the somewhat difficult part. I need to run wire back to my AC panel along the frame of the RV and then up through the, up through the floor of the RV and connect that to these two wires. This is AC loads hot and AC loads neutral. And then I need to run a wire back from my shoreline cable and connect that to these two wires. This is shore hot and shore neutral. And that's where all this wire I bought comes into play. It's 10-3 wire, which means it's 10 gauge with three strands of wire in this one cable. So the black, again, is the line, the white is the neutral, and the green is the ground. So the black and white wires will connect to the black and white wires in the transfer switch, and then the green wire in here, the ground wire, will connect to this ground bus right here. So this is where all the ground wires are gonna connect to. And then I'll run an eight gauge wire from one of these ground bus terminals down to the frame of the RV so that it grounds all that out. So to connect my transfer switch to my AC panel, which then provides the electricity to my AC loads, all my 120 volt appliances and the outlets in the RV, I need to connect these three wires to the points on this AC panel that my shore power line plugs into. So I'm, I need to disconnect my shore power line from the AC panel and replace it with these three wires. I'll then need to splice into the AC power line with another wire like this and then send that back to the transfer switch. And then what that does for me is when I plug the RV into shore power, it will supply 120 volt power to the transfer switch and thus to the rest of the RV. And then when we're unplugged from shore power, having this ran to the transfer switch or to the AC panel from the transfer switch will also allow us to have 120 volt power from our inverter when we're not plugged into shore power. Before I do that though, I need to go disconnect the RV from shore power. Okay, so this wire, this wire, and this top black wire, the, so these thicker wires are the wires coming from my shoreline cable, uh, what actually plugs into power. So I'm gonna need to disconnect these three wires and replace those with these three wires and run that up to the transfer switch where it reads AC loads hot, for the black, and AC loads neutral for the white, and then ground for the green one. Um, and then I need to, with a separate cable like this, um, connect to these current existing wires from the shoreline power cable, and run those to the transfer switch also, and wire those into the wires that say shoreline hot or shoreline, yeah, shoreline hot and shoreline neutral. And then wiring the transfer switch is finished. At this point though, since I don't have my batteries yet, I'm not going to unplug this. I'm not gonna disconnect this. I'm just going to run the wire up to the transfer switch and wire it into the transfer switch, but I'm not gonna disconnect these because then we'll be without shore power for the time being and I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to get everything ready so that once we get our batteries and I get the batteries installed, then I can just, you know, do that real quick. The wire will already be there and we will only be without power for 10 or 15 minutes. So I need to route this wire back behind the AC panel and then it goes down into this compartment and then over into this compartment. And I'm then gonna drill a hole through the floor of this compartment. Uh, well, two holes actually, one for each cable. And then I can run those two cables right along the frame of the RV and then up into the front pass through and wire them both into the transfer switch.
So I went ahead and pulled this whole cord through and now I can go ahead and run it along the frame with the rest of the wires on this RV all the way up to um, where the transfer switch is. So now that I've ran this cord all the way from the AC panel down through the floor, along the frame of the RV, along the main wireway, we've reached this point, which is where the water lines go up into the pass-through that all the other components are in to connect to the water pump. So I can actually just go right up through here, kind of you know, tear this foam off, replace it when I'm done, and run this wire right on up so I can take it up into the transfer switch. All right, now we're done with that cable, so I need to run a second identical cable to the one we just ran. Again, back behind the AC panel, up along the frame of the RV right next to the one we just ran, and up into the transfer switch. This cable is going to be the one that splices into the shore power cable, and then also wires into the transfer switch at the wires labeled uh, shore power hot and shore power neutral. All right, the transfer switch is almost completely wired in. The last thing I need to do before it's finished is uh, wire a ground wire from the uh, ground block, this eight gauge wire right here from the ground block down to chassis ground. I've already got a spot picked out. There's a screw that um, screws right into the frame of the RV that I'm gonna run out, stick this eyelet on, and then run back in, and then the transfer switch is all wired up. And with that, the inside of the transfer switch is all wired up. So now I need to connect this panel, which is the inverter monitor panel, or the inverter remote panel, to the inverter. And to do that, I need to use this cable. And that panel mounts just above the fridge, right next to the solar controller. So I have to run that phone cable from the panel, again, up under the, or down under the RV, along the frame, and up into this compartment and then I just plug it on into the inverter. And I want to run this right down into the compartment under here so I'm going to have to ruin my die core seal I did and then just reseal it.
now that that cable's ran, there's only two more things to do. I need to run a chassis ground for the inverter, and then I need to mount everything. I'm going to go ahead and mount everything now, um, and then run the chassis ground for the inverter. So I'm going to mount everything onto 2x4s, just so they're up off the floor. And I'm going to do that because there's actually my water pump right there in that uh, compartment. So if there was a if there's ever a leak in there, it'd be really bad if any of these components were sitting in water. So I'm just going to get them off the ground a little bit, uh, just so if there's ever a leak, uh, you know, I'll be we'll be good. All right, and that's it. Everything's mounted. So now the only thing left to do is wire the chassis grounds for the inverter and the charge controller, and then this portion of the install is all finished. On the back side of both the inverter and the converter charger, there's a terminal where you are to connect a four gauge wire and then run that to the frame of the RV to ground out the metal casing. So I'm just gonna run the four gauge wire down uh, the same hole that I've been bringing all this wire up into my pass through and find a good spot to ground the terminal out on. Well, at this point, I'm basically done with this part of the solar install. All I have left to do is just put some sealant over the holes I had to drill to run the wires through the floor of the RV, and also um, foam up where I had to cut the underbody tarping to run those wires through, as well as the foam I had to remove to run up into the pass-through, get all that sealed up. The next and final part of our solar install is to mount and wire the batteries up to all this, and then everything will be working. And if you haven't watched part one of our solar install series where we mount and wire together all of our solar panels and solar controller, go ahead and watch it. Now if you have any questions, feel free to comment, email us, or you can check out the website for more details. Thanks for watching part two of our solar install series. I'll catch you guys later.